So Christmas movies. There are a lot of really good Christmas movies out there. And some that aren't so good. And since Christmas is about three and a half weeks away, not even three and a half, I decided, 23 days by the way, I decided that I should talk about my favorite Christmas movies. So I will warn you now, this video does contain spoilers. Or, well, it might. I haven't actually talked about them yet, so I don't know what I'm going to say, but it will probably contain spoilers. Yes, it will contain spoilers. Um, so if... Look in the description, see what the movies are if you haven't seen them. No, you know what, I'll talk... No, I won't. No, if you're planning to watch a Christmas movie this year that you haven't seen, turn this video off. Because I don't want you to find out until I start talking about them. And if uh, if you hear me start to talk about a movie that you're like, oh, I haven't seen that and I really want to see it, turn it off, go watch the movie, come back and watch the video. Don't worry, I won't wait on you, but you can subscribe, and this video will continue to be there. I don't normally do th put things like this in the list, but I have to do an honorable mention. Sorry, I still haven't found my tripod, un my tripod unpacking all of my stuff for moving. But anyway, um... I do have to do an honorable mention, because uh, one of the best Christmas movies ever is definitely Die Hard, and I haven't seen Die Hard in probably 10 years. I remember I loved it, but I haven't seen it since college, at least. Yeah, since college. And um, yesterday I was trying to piece together the storyline of Die Hard in my head, and at one point I was like, and then Danny Glover, and I was like... Danny Glover isn't in Die Hard. What's in my head right now is a hodgepodge of Lethal Weapon and Die Hard. So if I can't remember the storyline, it doesn't go on the list. But honorable mention to Die Hard. Okay, so now I'm just going to talk about my two favorite Christmas movies. And I was going to talk about just one, but I could not decide between these two. So I'm going to talk about them in alphabetical order. Number one, A Christmas Story. This movie is like a beautiful, so strange, it's true story. It's this little boy who knows what he wants, but his parents don't think that he, <clears throat> his parents don't think that he should have it. And he thinks that his parents are wrong. That's... That's very believable and understandable. Um, he comes from this family full of weird people. People buy him weird gifts. And... Yeah. Now, anybody who knows my family knows that I can't relate to weird people in my family. Seriously, I love my family. But... <laughs> we're all a bunch of crazy folks. Anyway, um... I saw this movie for the first time when I was in seventh grade. We watched it in school. And there's some profanity in this movie. So when I was in seventh grade, I was like, they're letting us watch this in school? Yeah. Um, let's see. Oh, this movie's got so many funny parts to it. Like... The fact that his little brother wears, like, 12 layers every time that he goes outside. And, like, he can't walk, and he falls down, and can't stand up, and he can't talk. Did South Park steal this concept? Perhaps. I don't know. Um. Oh, fudge. Except I didn't say fudge. I said it. The grandmother of all dirty words. <laughs> the tongue frozen to the flagpole. Oh. Fortunately, I have never done that. But I've seen it happen, and it's, it's not pretty. When Ralphie is kicked by Santa? Oh. The lamp. What is it? It's a leg. Yeah. And... Like I said, there's going to be spoilers. Like, one of my favorite parts about this movie is that in the end, what happens is exactly what everyone told him would happen. And then he makes up a story about how his eye got, like, 
how he shot his eye out proverbially with like an a sickle. That's ridiculous, but everyone believes him. Yeah. This is definitely one of my favorite Christmas movies. Second favorite Christmas movie. How the Grinch Stole Christmas. I know some of you are like, you're a grown man. You can't really like that book that much. Well, let me show you something. This is my collection of Dr. Seuss books. Fox in Socks. The Cat in the Hat. The Foot Book. There's a Walket in My Pocket. One Fish, Two Fish, Red Fish, Blue Fish. Scrambled Egg Super. That's right. I do like Dr. Seuss that much. I honestly believe that he is one of one of the best writers that the English language has ever seen. The way that man commands words is just brilliant. And you can say what you want about him repeatedly using the same meter and about like immature style and all that. He was really good. He invented the word nerd, which is actually very important to me because I like to have a label kind of. And um, he wasn't always like a children's writer. He actually uh, did pornography during World War II. Not as an actor, but as a writer. Awkward. Anyway, um, yeah, How the Grinch Stole Christmas is brilliant. I mean, you've got like the dog with antlers. You've got uh, that heartbreaking scene where Cindy Lou Who runs into Santa Claus stealing the tree. And then, oh man, you have the song. You're a mean one, Mr. Grinch. You really ba da da. And interestingly, that's the same guy who did the voice of Tony the Tiger. And this movie was indeed great. Um, the Grinch had a hard life. He was born with a tough medical condition. His heart was two sizes too small. Which means that his, his entire body was getting insufficient blood flow. It should have killed him at a very young age. It's a miracle that he lived, and he was bitter because of it. And as such, he decided that Christmas should not exist. So he set out to stop it. And fortunately, in a medical miracle at the end of the movie, his heart grows by three sizes, so it's one size too big now. Which, I could see being just as bad, because, like, it's pressing on his sternum and his ribs and stomach. I don't know, I'm no doctor, but that just doesn't seem like it would be good. Yeah, How the Grinch Stole Christmas. So I am in the, video, in the middle of filming video number three when I got this notification on my iPad. I don't know if you're going to be able to read it or not, but it says, Punching Deadline Today. Fortunately, I'm filming the third video, and then I'm going to update my blog. So yeah, that punching deadline notification makes me really happy that I just finished filming my third video. Um, go watch some good Christmas movies. Die Hard, A Christmas Story, How the Grinch Stole Christmas. Next week, expect what was going to be the last part of this video, but I decided it was just going to make the video too long. Um, expect a video on my least favorite Christmas movie. Rudolph or Frosty? Hmm.